Welcome everyone to this live webinar brought to you by Global Sources Match. I'm your host, Megla Bhardwaj, and uh, we are going to be uh, talking about South Africa today. Very, very interesting, exciting topic. E-commerce in South Africa is growing very fast. And our topic today is all about e-commerce growth in South Africa. What are the opportunities? And we're also going to be talking about the financing options that are available, because one of the challenges we found that entrepreneurs face in South Africa is getting finance. So we've got two amazing experts who really specialize in finance, and they're going to be telling you and giving you suggestions on different ways in which you can raise capital if you want to start a product business. And um, let's first of all, talk a little bit about Global Sources Match, which is an amazing service that I think everybody should um, take advantage of. This is a free service that's offered by Global Sources, where Global Sources actually matches buyers with suppliers. So if you're an importer looking for specific products, you can send your product requirements to Global Sources and the Global Sources Match team will actually look for suppliers based on your requirements and then uh, send the supplier list to you so that you can contact those suppliers and then source products from them directly. So let's quickly watch a video about Global Sources Match so that you guys understand a little bit more about uh, this service. So can we play the video, please? and customized service to help international buyers identify the most relevant products and suppliers. In 2020, Global Sources Match helped more than 1,000 buyers from around the world connect with quality Asia-based suppliers through private business matching and online meetings. How does Global Sources Match work? The process starts by getting product requirements from you, including technical specifications, desired supplier type, certifications required, and export markets served. Our dedicated match team then shortlists matching products from verified global sources suppliers. Once you are satisfied with our recommendations, we will facilitate communications between both parties. The result is high value, high accuracy, and highly efficient business matching, making Global Sources Match the most sought after premium service among our buyer community. 99% of buyers find suitable suppliers through Match. Let's see what our buyers say. I think it's an awesome idea connecting the buyers and the suppliers. And I hope to be able to attend more in the future. So I get the chance to meet more suppliers from Shenzhen, but also the surrounding areas. And many more positive comments from buyers. Thousands of successful online meetings have been held, connecting buyers and suppliers. Supercharge your sourcing. Join Global Sources Match now to source from verified suppliers that are right for your business. Okay, cool. So Global Sources Match is a free service uh, that is available to buyers. And at the end of the webinar, we will be showing you the QR code that you can use to go directly to the Global Sources Match uh, webpage, and you can submit your requirements over there. And we also have a range of eBooks that have been written by um, our in-house writers. And uh, we are gonna be showing you the webpage where you can download all of these eBooks for free. Um, so stick around until the end of the webinar. So what we're going to do is our speakers have a couple of presentations to share, and then we're also going to be taking questions from the audience. So if you have any questions, type your questions in the Q&A box. It's important to use the Q&A box for your questions and not the chat box. If you want to have, you know, make any other comments, you can use the chat box, but then for questions, use the Q&A box. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to invite our first guest, Andrew Marin, to do a quick introduction. Hi, Andrew. Hi. Hi, Megla. Hi, hi everyone. Hope, hope everyone's doing well. Um, hey, thanks a lot, Andrew, for joining us here today. So first of all, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm joining, us, uh, joining you guys from um, Hyde Park in Johannesburg. Okay, uh, awesome. From, Tell us about yourself our, and your business. Sure. Um, so we're a fintech business called Profit Share Partners, and we are a funder mostly to the SME market uh, where people don't have 
you know, things like security, financials, uh, track record, usual stuff that traditional funders want. And, you know, we've got clients like e-commerce guys as well. You know, I've got, how do I start up this business when I can't access cash? And so that's the kind of answer we provide to most clients. Um, and yeah, we've been doing this for the last four years. Uh, it's got quite a bit of traction. It's a great way to help clients uh, scale their businesses quickly. And we, we that stepping stone into traditional finance. So we do a lot of import finance as well for our clients. Um, uh, as long as you're in the supply chain of a large, large company, we can probably help. Um, and then, yeah, most of our clients, you know, our motto is grow them to lose them. And then usually after about 12 months, uh, we lose our clients to the traditional funders like the banks and, and so forth. I love that motto, lose them, grow them to lose them. <laughs> That's yep. fantastic. Okay, so Andrew, um, you're going to be presenting in a little bit. And let's go to our next speaker, Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us here, Yolanda. So do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your background? Um, how do you help entrepreneurs? And uh, then we'll get into your slides. All right. So I am a wealth advisor based here in Durban, South Africa. I have a big focus on financial education, um, everything from uh, investing, financial protection. And uh, I'm a big advocate of encouraging my clients to go through the entrepreneur route and specifically e-commerce because the barrier to entry is so low. And I run my wealth management firm here in Dublin. And that's basically what we do, wealth management and financial education. Okay, fantastic. So Yolanda, let's get started with your presentation. You've got some very interesting details about e-commerce in South Africa. So go ahead and share your slides and uh, let's get started. All right, guys, so we're talking about e-commerce today, and um, I myself have a couple of e-commerce stores. I'll tell you about it uh, in, in a little while. But just to expand on more on what I said, I am a, a wealth manager here, uh, but I've never been employed in South Africa. I've always been in business, and uh, e-com has been a major part of that. So I have three e-commerce stores. Uh, one, we're uh, bringing in healthcare goods from the United States. Another one, we're doing the whole East, the China stuff. And then one is intellectual property, where I'm selling my courses, my content, and that kind of stuff. And it's the digital economy. And that's what's bringing me money as somebody who has never been employed in, in the country. I've been an expat for the longest of times. I returned to South Africa in 2015. And e-com has been my playground. And that's where I've been. So here's the realities of why I'm such a big advocate of e-commerce in, in the country. South Africa is only 1% of the global economy, yet we are the 37th largest e-commerce market in the world. Just last year alone, and we know that with lockdown and COVID and all of that, uh, e-commerce has grown. And last year alone, we've done over $4 billion dollars in 2020 in e-commerce sales. And that's a huge number. I mean, if you know the Rand dollar exchange rate, we're trading at around, um, what is it? 14 and a half to the dollar. So that's a lot, a lot of money. And the research is also telling us that since hard lockdown, since the pandemic, 68% of South African consumers have reduced the frequency of visiting physical supermarkets. They're, they're, instead of going two or three times a week to pick, pick up the bread and milk and stuff like that, um, they're going less frequently. And for me, it's an indication of the psyche is changing. They're more comfortable with going on their phone, downloading in the app and getting the small things uh, delivered to their door. And it's a gateway for, for entrepreneurs like us because they're more comfortable with shopping online. They're going to make bigger purchase online, not just a 20 rand loaf of bread anymore. It's going to be a hundred. It's going to be a thousand. It's going to be 10,000. Those transactions are going to happen online. Okay. Although these numbers are huge, $4 billion are done last year in sales. e only accounts for 2% of South Africans retail spend. And that is great potential for us to grow and our entrepreneurs, we need to be getting into the space early and on, early on for us to capitalize and secure our space and be able to compete with the big guys, you know, the big uh, re online retailers in the country. And that's one of the nice things about e-com. Uh, we can play on that same level 
as those big guys. Um, everybody can go out and get in, uh, an e-commerce store. It's, it's nothing hard, nothing technical. You don't have to be a massive coder. Everybody has an opportunity, equal opportunity to get into the e-commerce market. And we see in South Africa, internet access is increasing. There's more, um, there's more internet access in, in the rural areas. A lot of spaces, a lot of communities are getting free access. I think there's a township in Cape Town where Google has given them free internet access. Um, we have greater access to fiber now. The costs of uh, internet connections in the home, those prices are coming down. And I know that we have some of the largest data costs in the world, but it is coming down. And we'll see in the future, those prices will come down. More people will come online. They will start shopping online. So again, it's important for us to get into this e-commerce thing early, for us to get our stake in this market. And I think the biggest, the biggest thing of why we should be getting into e-commerce early is because the young people, I mean, if you look at this picture, right, that's the official pose of young people. They face on a screen and sometimes they're smiling, sometimes they're not, but this is the future, okay? Um, it's mobile technology. They're doing everything on their phone. They're meeting partners on their phone. They're being educated on their phone. They're buying online. And that's where that's where the technology is taking us. And this this they're going to be the most powerful consumer group. And as they come into the job market, they go uh, to tertiary, they start their businesses. They're going to become the biggest consumer market that we need to tap into. And they're not going into the stores. They are shopping online. They will be shopping online. Uh, worldwide, we find that 2.3 billion millennials are coming into the market with their massive buying power. Okay, and they are going to be driving consumption. And, you know, I told you that I'm a wealth manager and we find that a lot of the investors, uh, the big investment houses, Goldman Sachs uh, and BlackRock and things like that, they have investments targeting these young people because they're studying their behavior. What are they doing? What are they like? Uh, what are they shopping uh, habits? are, And they're investing in these technologies because they know that this group is going to be such a big player when it comes to market demand in five to 10 years or so. And here's the reality of South Africa. I mean, you guys know we're not in a good space. Uh, a lot of people, I think more than 50% of our people live below the bread line. Jobs are not being created and cost of living is crazy. I mean, inflation is sitting at around four and a half percent. Uh, food inflation, certain food groups are at 7-8% when it comes to meat, beef, uh, certain items like potatoes, they're at 8% uh, annual inflation. Education inflation is at 9%. Health inflation, private health care, um, 7 to 8% inflation. Fuel increases, 5% at least on average, 5% a year. And utility increases, our beloved ESCOM slapping us year on year with 15% increases. So we're at the point where, I mean, if you have a job, um, lucky you, <laughs> but eventually that one job and that one source of income is not going to be sustainable in the future. If we look at these kind of increases, you're going to need a side hustle. Ecom is great for that. Uh, where you can start small, low barrier to entry and to fuel to fuel your income in the future. Like I said, I have three. And when I was an expat, I was living in the Middle East. I had an e-com store. It wasn't even an official store. It was just a Facebook page. And I was selling, I went on to AliExpress and all of these um, dresses and tops and, you know, this club wear that the girls like. And that's what I used to sell. So I used to post a picture on my Facebook page and put a price on it, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. And this is me sitting in the Middle East at the time. I went on to Skype. I got a local 031 number and that was my consumer line. And people used to call me, right? So I used to be sitting in a meeting in, in the Middle East and then a customer used to call, check you up on the order. I can literally go on my phone, see where the order is. And that's it. I made money in South Africa while I was sitting in the Middle East. And then, you know, the post office comes and messes things up with their delivery schedule. So, but the potential is there. There's so much potential. And, you know, in, we're living in such exciting times. There's no reason why um, so these stats that we see about unemployment it shouldn't be there. Not when there's so much potential in our country uh, when it comes to internet technology and e-commerce. And 
as much as we always say there's a job crisis in the country, the real crisis in the, is an entrepreneurial crisis where individuals cannot recognize that opportunity. And unfortunately, it's only a few people that are being able to see this and capitalize with this. And that's where the real crisis is. It's not the job crisis, it's the entrepreneur crisis. And it's not, it's not a big deal to get into the space. The, uh, the barrier to entry is extremely, extremely low. And you can easily get a Shopify. Uh, if you learn WordPress, you can learn this for free on YouTube. A domain, a domain is free. Maybe it'll cost you about 80 bucks online. You can go to domains.co.za. Hosting with Afrohost is 50 bucks a month. You need a payment gateway. A payment gateway is free with PayFast. You can take dollars on that payment gateway. You can take Bitcoin on that payment gateway. You pay a transaction fee uh, for each transaction. And you can even go to a third-party platform if you want. don't want to do all of this, like the big retailers. You can go on, sign up as a seller there and sell your products there. And you'll find a lot of people buying from the East and selling it on these huge platforms and utilizing the infrastructure that the platform has already developed in terms of logistics, in terms of marketing. And that, that's the new economy, guys. This is the digital economy. And we need to start capital, uh, capitalizing. And even if you just start small, it costs you under uh, 5,000 rand a year just to get started and slowly build up to, to something good that can be replacing your income. And again, I do it officially uh, in terms of getting your business registration uh, registered. And we saw last year with the relief that was handed out uh, by the various departments, they were only giving to businesses that were registered and were paying taxes and were contributing to the economy. So get registered. It doesn't take long. Um, you can literally register now. Maybe it'll take you about 30 minutes or so. But by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll have your registration number on your phone, SMS. So the registration part is, is very efficient when it comes to business registration. Get registered with tax and VAT, depending on your line of business. Bank account, you can do it with your business registration, quick and easy. And if you're importing, of course, it's the import license as well. And funding, I know Andrew's going to talk a little bit about this in a while. But uh, government is also offering funding, um, various government institutes. And you'll see here, it's the for, uh, Small Business Development Agency. The website is on there. I think Megla is going to share the slides. So you'll have a copy of, of these um, agencies where you can go and get financing to, to scale your businesses uh, at a greater rate. The Small Enterprise Finance Agency, another government organization. Fun find, I'm not sure if they, they're government or private but they seem to have a, a very smooth online application process. Industrial Development Corporation, if you look at manufacturing uh, and setting up industry in the country, they're providing funding as well. And the National Empowerment Fund, which is big in the BEE or triple BEE, or I'm not sure what status we're in now, but they're, uh, they're in that group and they're providing uh, funding in that way. So basically, my message is, is very simple that um, the digital economy is here. We're at a space where your single income is no longer going to sustain you. Um, E-commerce is an easy entry point. The, the cost of entry is really low. You just need a little bit of technical ability, which you can learn online for free. And depending on how quickly you want to scale, we have funding available. So it's about doing some research. What are people buying? How are they buying it? Uh, this can be done. It, it's not rocket science. This, this is easy. I was on TikTok the other day. There was a 16-year-old South African sharing how he made 300,000 rands in online sales and drop shipping sales. So drop shipping is basically the concept of where you go and market the product and you contact the manufacturer in India, China, or wherever, and they will deliver the product for you. So me as a client, I'll go onto your website, I will order the cell phone and you'll see my order. Then you'll go to the manufacturer in China and say, please deliver to Yolanda in Durban. Just pay the money already. You will pay the manufacturer's fee and I will get this nice phone delivered and thinking that you supplied me. Meanwhile, it was the whole drop shipping process. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, in the country, in the space. And I hope you guys are able to recognize it and grab it with both hands. If you guys want to reach out eventually when you do well with your e-commerce stores and you're looking to invest and uh, diversify your income other than from your sales, reach out. 
uh, you landed financially fabulous females, a lot of financial literacy content there. And uh, the wealth management company is uh, solomonwealth.co.za. All right, so that's it. That's my presentation, Megla. Thank you so much for that, Yolanda. So you can unshare your screen. And uh, let's see, we've got one question. So Michelle is asking, hi, Yolanda. Thank you for your presentation. We're a small business in South Africa. We've applied to all the government funding. However, we are still struggling immensely with government funding. Is there any other funding organization you would recommend? Uh, yeah, at this point, I'd say Andrew. So Michelle, Andrew's presentation is going to be covering that. So let's get to that. Let's just see if there are any more questions uh, from anyone. So, okay, Michelle is saying, awesome, thanks. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, Yolanda, I wanted to ask you, what about social commerce in South Africa? Like, you know, are people also buying on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok? Like that's the uh, new frontier of e-commerce, I feel. Is that very popular? Uh, yeah, I think the TikTok uh, sales, uh, they haven't really uh, got, uh, it's not as big as Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I don't think we have all of those features yet. Maybe it's just me, uh, but Instagram, yes, where you can literally uh, run the ad. Somebody can click on buy now, do the whole shopping on that specific platform, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, it's there. And for me, I I, I feel it's doing brilliantly. Uh, I get a lot of leads that way, a lot of sales on, you know, my other products and all of that. It's about learning what's out there. You know, there's so much out there, so much potential and the guys can do really well. Yeah. And I think also with, the, you know, platforms like Global Sources, it's very easy to source a product directly from a manufacturer in China or any other country in Asia and then put your own brand on it. So you could actually do a private label right brand. Label. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can put your own brand on it, maybe make some minor changes to the product and make it your own. And that really adds a lot of value to the overall, you know, uh, product that you're that you're selling. So, okay, let's see if there are any more questions. Then we'll just go to Andrew. Okay, one question. Joe is asking, "Hi, Yolanda, can you assist when it comes to opportunities for women around the ports of the country?" Uh, it depends on what kind of assistance. Uh, I mean, uh, I have shared the financing. But when it comes to those business opportunities, you guys have to do the research on your own. Uh, what do you have the capacity to do? What is your interest? And that is just basic, uh, you know, it's the market research that you guys have to do on your own. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's get to Andrew's presentation now. Um, Andrew, are you there? Cool. Okay, yes. so go ahead and share your slides and uh, let's get started. Great. Um, and thanks. I think Yolanda kind of teed up the uh, the conversation, great. Um, and I think we'll, we'll start with some of the stuff that she's been through. I think what, she, what Yolanda has uh, shown us is that we don't necessarily need, uh, you don't need a lot of capital to start up, right? You can, um, uh, by using third party um, uh, participants or these e-commerce sites and using drop shipping, you can actually start up with very little. Um, you know, the old days was if you wanted to sell sneakers, um, in a in a store, you would then go to, uh, you know, you need to save up some money, uh, you need to, uh, for the rent and a couple of months of deposits, if you can get into the, a great mall or a great sh uh, shopping area, you had to sort out your warehousing, you had to sort out, you know, your, your tech between all of that, get in payment systems in, um, and it could take you forever to, you know, just save up that money to, to, to do that. Now, uh, as Yolanda mentioned, I mean, she was sitting in the Middle East, she was having, uh, you know, she had a South African, uh, uh, well, I guess it's a global um, e-commerce site, but obviously with an 031 number, you know, people thought she was right there in KZN um, and having drop shipping done, you know, from other parts of the world. So uh, I think the biggest thing that you need now is obviously marketing. So I think a lot of, a lot of what Yolanda has covered, but there's a few things that I just want to maybe take you through. And I think uh, COVID's accelerated this market, you know, so more, more people are willing to go online, more people are happier to shop online. And so it's a great time to get into the space. You know, you don't necessarily need this um, high street retail shop anymore. You don't need to have massive warehouses to stock your goods. Um, you don't need to have, um, you don't even need to carry stock. And so that's, that's quite, um, that's quite interesting. Um, and I think everything from, you know, you can outsource logistics, um, um, I think Yolanda spoke about, you know, you could all the places that you can go, like um, uh, um, 
to some of the sites that you mentioned that you can do it for free or you can go into a third party platform. Uh, one of the ones that we work with is a company called Get Lion that was created recently. And so on there, you can, it's a free, it's a free site. You can, you can create your online uh, e-commerce site very cheaply, or actually I think most of it's free. Um, and you know, it's a site for that, and there must be tons of other market, and they've got a nice marketplace, and there must be lots of other places to do that. But it's just one of the names that this came to mind um, uh, as we spoke about. And I think the biggest thing that, you know, a lot of people are wondering about is, okay, so how do I finance this, right? And so let me quickly take you through some of the things. So one is, uh, as Yolanda mentioned, you can start up with things like drop shipping, right? Where you don't need, um, you don't even need to own the stock, right? Your costs are going to go towards marketing. Yes, you can set up this whole e-commerce site, but how do people know that you're there, right? And so the biggest thing I think in this new e-commerce world is, is marketing, getting people to come into your site, you know, obviously, hopefully you're tacking the right product, you've got the right, uh, uh, you know, you're targeting the right audience. Um, and then it's, and then it's a quite a, quite a simple game once you, once you get the understanding of it. The problem is then, uh, and then once you then start um, uh, doing this, obviously, this, this is very little capital, very not capital intensive at all. Uh, the next part is you want to now keep stock. And there's a few there's a few products around. Um, the, the one of the nicest ones I see is called the Merchant Cash Advance, and so the Merchant Cash Advance is what it does. It looks at your history of sales. So I think most of the guys or some of the guys that we work with, uh, you need about a minimum of six months of of proof that you've you know got enough sales. Uh, I think say it's thirty thousand rand a month, um, and then they will say, okay, you've done this credibly for the last couple of months. Uh, we will give you we will give you a, a lump sum amount. So let's say maybe a hundred or 200,000. So now if you want to now, you know, buy in stock or do other things with, uh, you know, you want to upgrade your site to do things, you can, you can then do it uh, with that. So there's, there's great people uh, around. You can come onto our profit share partner website to find that merchant cash advance. You can go to people like uh, things retail capital. Um, and so they, uh, they do that kind of thing and they, and they check your, your credit card sales and they uh, track your EFTs. And so that's another great way to get uh, funding very early in your life cycle. Um, we, we look at a couple of things as well, which you know you can obviously, if you're in South Africa or in, uh, in another region, you can chat to your fund or look for funders like this, where if you've got stock, uh, and we've done this a couple of times, where you've got stock with high margins, um, but your client wants you to have the, the, the stock in country. So we've got a client who brings in um a certain kind of commodity and i can't maybe i can't tell you the goods of hand because it'll kind of uh, um, become an issue but they've got a they've got a widget that they bring into the market that the retail stores uh, want and every one of you know every one of us have this has this in our home and we use it every single day um, but these guys are able to bring it into the country at say the landed cost is one rand um, um, and you know, once you add your all of your other costs around it, it's probably like one rand fifty. Um, they wholesale it around about three rand, and the 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 retail stores at the end retail it for about nine rand. So as you can see, there's a lot of value, there's a lot of margin in that product. So you will find funders or other investors who can come alongside you, um, um, and, and this is what we do as well. If you've got such a big margin on the product and we know the product kind of moves, you can then come to us and say, okay, I know these guys will take, you know, 10,000 units from me a month, but I can't, I can't wait for shipments to happen. It takes too long. So I need to bring in 12 months of shipments or six months of shipments and have it here. And they will only place the order with me when they see the stocks in country. And so um, we can do uh, this kind of stock financing where we can, uh, or, in your country, look for somebody similar that will hold the stock uh, at their warehouse or logistics place. And then as you get the sales, you then uh, approach us with your purchase order or your contract or your invoice, um, and then we release the stock. And, and, the, and the, the thinking behind that is, you know, because it's got such a large margin, uh, yes, you don't have the security, but the stock becomes a security. Because as a funder, if you can't sell it, I know that, yes, it's only cost me at 1 Rand 20 or 1 Rand 50, uh, it's got a market value of nine rand. Uh, if something goes horribly wrong, I, I can probably just go to the market and dump these things at two rand and get my money back. 
And so those are other kind of options that you can look at. Uh, you know, it could be an investor, it could be a, a, a professional firm that does it. Uh, so that's another way of, of, of funding stock where you don't have the capital. Um, import finance without any capital. So, you know, you've done your e-commerce site and now you want to keep stock uh, in hand or in, in country, or you've got large, um, um, large buyers, like, you know, you get one of the big corporate chains to buy from you. Um, we can provide funding. Um, and I think there's a few other people that do it for the larger scale organizations, but for the SME side, uh, and that's where we specialize, uh, we can provide end-to-end -end funding. So as long as you have a, a, a credible order from a credible party, I mean, you may not have financials, you don't have the security, you don't have the cash to put it up. We can then say, great, because you've got a great um, counterparty or client in South Africa wanting the goods, we will pay for your stocks. We'll pay 100% to your supplier. We'll pay for the shipping costs. We'll pay for your duties, your logistics. Um, um, and then when it lands in the country, you know, once you deliver it to your clients, it's probably they're going to pay you in 30 or 60 days. We will, we will wait for that. So the only time you ever pay us is when you get paid. So it's a great way to finance um, um, goods where you don't have any cash flow. Um, the only thing we need there, and I think most funders would need there, is that you have a credible, um, a credible buyer. Because if they can't rely on you for the repayment, you've got to make sure that there's a credible buyer and there's no sales risk that, you know, you bring in the goods into the country and you're going to sell enough uh, to, to someone that we can, you know, take off the, um, uh, we can recover our capital. Um, and that's the same for, and that's the same for um, any kind of order. You know, if you have any kind of order with a, where there's local import or whatever, if you have a order with a large reputable uh, company, um, we can we can fund it even though you don't have the financial strength. We can put the capital behind it uh, and help you execute on the order. Uh, and as I said, we only take fund we only take our uh, share of profits and our capital back when you've actually received the funds from the client. So we kind of take the risk with you as well. And then throughout all of this, I guess you get to a point where you now you know our motto, as we said earlier, is we build our clients to lose them. Now what happens is you know you've done this a few times, you've now built a track record. Um, you now become a lot more attractive to the traditional funders out there because they can now see, hey, this person's been trading for the last 12 months. Um, they've got cash in the bank. They've been able to deliver. And then you get a lot more options for, for funding, you know, bank overdraft, uh, uh, term loans from a bank or, th or those kind of things. So um, um, that's it. So that's how we can help you build into that space, help you get started without very little capital or no capital. Um, yeah, I'm willing to take um, any questions. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, uh, Andrew. That was very insightful. You can unshare your screen now. And everyone watching, if you have any questions, type them in the Q&A box and Andrew and Yolanda will be taking questions. So we, we've also got a few questions from people who registered before the webinar. So let me uh, try to read these questions out. Let's see. Um, Okay, how can I expand my food products in Africa? So I guess this is somebody, I'm not sure if they are based in Africa or outside of Africa, but they want to sell their food products in Africa. So let's say, let's say they are based outside of Africa. Um, any suggestions on how they can market their products in Africa? Uh, Yolanda, do you wanna go first or should I? Answer some of that. You go ahead. I think you're a lot more experienced in that than I. Um, okay, so so it'll depend on whether it's um, uh, perishable food stuff or um, you know dry goods. Um, I, I think the biggest thing is like like anyone, like anyone of us sitting here and trying to start an e-commerce store or you're a large corporation trying to find a new market. Um, it's up to you to find that market. So you have got to find you know who you know you've got to. Uh, prove to somebody that, hey, this is, I've got a great product. This is a great food product. Um, um, and I need you to, I need you to buy it because it, I don't know, it tastes really good. Uh, it's got a great price point. It'll change your life. I don't know, you know, one of those kind of things. Um, and you've got to find that market. All right. And so you've got to figure out whether it's a retail client, like, you know, you got the one off kind of client, or you're wanting to sell it into a, uh, like a large corporation. So you want to sell it to a large I don't know, like a pick and pay or a shop right uh, kind of thing. Um, and I guess, you know, the question's a bit open. Um, so it just depends where you want to do that. So 
I think the first thing is, um, if you're going for a large corporation, you need to get in touch with one of the buyers because uh, you're going to sell, uh, you're going to attract one of the buyers to your goods and say, listen, this is a great product. And then once you, um, once you get an order from them, I guess then that's, uh, that's easier. If it's e-commerce, I guess it's going to be like, like anyone else does, I guess you've got to um, um, kind of market to showcase your product. Right. Um, okay, so Tina is asking me, I have Andrew's LinkedIn, if possible, appreciate with your good insights. So Tina, yes, we are going to be sharing um, Andrew's email address as well, and you can probably look him up on LinkedIn. <laughs> Um, okay, so Michelle is saying, thanks, Andrew, for your presentation. How can we get in contact with you for a meeting regarding funding? So Michelle, just uh, wait for um, 10, 15 minutes, and we are going to be sharing Andrew's uh, email address with you as well. Okay, so Mohammed is saying, I'm from Pakistan. I have a vast experience of textile manufacturing. Kindly guide me if I can export to South Africa from Pakistan. So I guess he's asking to, again, import products into South Africa what would be the process for somebody to do that? Um, okay, so I'll, I'll take that one again. Um, so yeah, if you, if you want to export into SA, um, once again, you, you've got to find your clients here. Uh, so as soon as you can find a client or a distributor in South Africa, then, I mean, uh, you know, South Africa uh, can take imports from anywhere in the world. It's a bit, quite, a, quite an open economy. Um, um, as you can see, it's just any goods and services, textiles, I think are, um, I don't think they're as protected um, uh, in the country. So it's, you know, you don't have massive duties when you're bringing in goods like uh, textiles. So I think you just need to find a distributor or somebody who can market your goods here or, or find, find your first client. And then I think it's easy to, to move on. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. What are the restrictions, regulations to import wine into South Africa? Is that too specific? <laughs> Any idea, Andrew? Uh, um, yeah, I think you can go on to the, um, uh, South Africa's got a massive wine industry. So I'm not sure if it's regulated in terms of uh, import duties, uh, but you can go onto the, the SARS website. The, um, I think it's SARS, S-A-R-S dot gov, uh, which is the South African um, .gov.za, which is a South African revenue authority. Um, and in there, they will give you all of the guidelines around um, um, at mostly the pricing restriction. I don't think there's any restrictions in terms of anything else. It's probably just the duties. Uh, but I do see we've got, we've got wines from all over the world in South Africa. Um, so people are definitely getting in. I think you just, obviously, once again, you just need to find a, um, a reselling organization or a wholesaler. Right. Yeah, and Tina is also looking for resellers who could help push their products into Africa. Uh, please find me at my LinkedIn. Thank you for connecting. Yeah, Tina, I would suggest maybe you can connect with uh, Andrew or Yolanda later. We'll just be sharing their email addresses as well and see if uh, they can provide some insights to you. So let's see if there are any more questions in the chat. Um, so... One question is about marketplaces. So what kind of e-commerce marketplaces are popular in South Africa nowadays? Um, and, you know, like in the US, it's Amazon. And even in India, Amazon is really popular. And a lot of entrepreneurs can actually sell on Amazon. So are there any marketplaces in South Africa? And are any of them onboarding international sellers? So that's the question. Um, for me, I find that there's two big marketplaces. One is Bid or Buy, and I find that there's a lot of uh, international sellers on there. Uh, so if uh, the international sellers are looking for a market, they can go on to Bid or Buy. I'm sure you can do a registration because I find if I try and order on that platform, maybe they'll say um, a week before uh, the order is actually placed or leaves the warehouse. So, you know, that gives me an indication that it's an overseas supplier. And then the next one is, is take a lot, take a lot.com. Um, like that's basically our Amazon of, of South Africa, where a third party seller can get onto that platform, register as a seller. Um, I'm on that platform. So I can, I can buy from wherever in the world, bring it into the country, use the infrastructure that uh, Take A Lot has developed and their marketing, place my product on there and, and get a sale. So, so those they, are the two, two major platforms. 
And do they also offer services like um, fulfillment by Amazon where they actually do the last mile delivery? Because I think that is a service that has really helped global sellers sell into yeah. markets like America and, and you know other markets because they don't have to do the fulfillment. They just send all of their shipments directly to Amazon's warehouses and then Amazon yeah, does the, the delivery. It's the same, it's the same with Take a Lot. Like if I if I get a sale on on my Take a Lot platform, I gotta send send my goods to the Take a Lot warehouse and they it just follows their distribution system. So it's a lot of work of my lord. You know, I just have to wait for my order and ship it to take a lot and they handle everything. Okay. Yeah, so there's also to... Macro. Sorry, Megla. Macro. Oh, macro. Uh, macro has a third party marketplace as well. I'm not sure if they're doing overseas sellers, but they're not uh, widely known. So there's a lot of opportunity there. So if people can get into the macro third party selling, that's a good opportunity as well. Okay. What kind of product categories are you seeing popular? for e-commerce specifically? I mean, because of COVID, I think things like, you know, groceries and uh, food items have become really popular. But apart from those, um, are you seeing like electronics more popular or maybe fashion apparel kind of products in terms of categories, any insights into which ones are doing better? I think uh, fashion is the biggest by far. I think that's what the, the research has shown. And then uh, smaller market segments for consumer, consumer electronics, uh, sports goods is also uh, very big as well. Sportswear, uh, sneakers, and all of those kind of items. I'm not sure what uh, insight Andrew has on, on that. Um, Yolanda, I'm not sure what's, what's popular. I just know every day there's some delivery to our house. So uh, <laughs> always some kind of box uh, opening up. Yeah. And uh, what I found, though, that uh, I think the South African e-commerce retailers have got it, you know, have improved so much that you can order something uh, this evening and you, tomorrow uh, uh, you have it in your house tomorrow, you know, which mm. a couple of years ago, I would have thought that just wasn't, you know, we wouldn't get into that kind of level. But it's, yeah, it's becoming phenomenal. Uh, yeah. But I think um, uh, Take Lot's the biggest one that I know. Uh, but you mentioned quite an interesting thing there, Yolanda. It's, so do you think with like smaller marketplaces, because there's less sellers on it, um, you got a better chance of being noticed? Or, or what do you I think? think? I think it's about how savvy the, the consumer is. Like for me, specifically, I buy uh, books because my kids are homeschooled, right? So I'm buying these Cambridge books and I go shopping around. I go to Take a Lot, I go to Loot and I go to Macro. And that's where I get most of my books from. It's the, the, the macro third party seller. I don't know who they are, where they're from, but they're on that platform for some reason with the best prices. So depending how much research the consumer does and where he chooses to buy, which platform he chooses to buy. Is from. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I was going to say one more. You mentioned macro. One of yeah. the uh, one of the questions um, somebody asked about, could they import wine into South Africa? I think it was... Uh, uh, somebody out of uh, Australia. Um, Macro would be a great uh, a great place to start as well because Macro is probably the biggest, one of the biggest yes, retailers liquor. of uh, liquor in the country. Uh, I'm not sure how much they do on their website, but uh, physically they're one of the biggest retailers. So it's, it could be a great place to, to start there. Right. And somebody's just asking um, if we can put in links to all of the... Um, websites that were mentioned. So I'm just, I've just uh, put them in takealot.com and then macro is M-A-K-R-O.co.za. Yeah. Um, what is the third one that you mentioned, Yolanda? Take a lot, macro. Uh, bid or buy, bid or buy .co.za. How do you spell that? B-I-D. B-I-D. O-R-B-U-Y. Okay, bid or buy, okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, these are the three um, main marketplaces that are there that are available. Okay, so guys, do you have any more questions for our um, panelists here? Okay, what are your thoughts regarding cannabis and CBD products? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> for me, I love it. I just think uh, government should be more open, especially with the licensing and production, because we got great weather here. Um, but I think there's so much potential in South Africa for that, the use of CBD, not the other one, but <laughs> CBD, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, let's see if we have any. I didn't understand the names of the two e-commerce retailers. One of them also does the order fulfillment. Could you please repeat them? So if you look in the chat, if you look in the chat, Thomas, I have just posted all three links. 
So it's take a lot macro and bid or buy. So I've just posted all the three links over there. Just take a look. Okay, so we've answered this question. Would be great if I could also have uh, Yolanda's LinkedIn too. Haha. -ha. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can look up Yolanda on LinkedIn and we'll just be sharing her email address as well. So guys, any more questions for our panelists about financing? <laughs> That's the main topic over here, financing. So let us know if you have any questions. Uh, will this be saved on the recording? Yes, we are recording this and uh, we are going to be sending this out uh, to you if you have registered for the webinar. So yeah, not to worry about that. Um, okay, so last couple of questions that we received from uh, people who've registered uh, previously. So what are the plans to digitize Africa? And this is a very broad kind of question, but what are you seeing in terms of, you know, the overall digitization um, of, of, you know, various aspects of business and, you know, whether it is registering a company or, or you know, doing, uh, doing business in general, what kind of trends are you seeing, Yolanda? Uh, for me, when it comes to the digitization, it, it starts with policy from government, and they've been dragging their feet in terms of the spectrum and allocation and things like that. Uh, but I think um, the private sector has has done a lot. Uh, like if you look at all, all of the platforms that we mentioned, they're all, they're all private and they've done their bit in uh, digitizing a lot. Uh, our whole re registration system for business is digital. And I find that it's very, very efficient where I think in December I sat uh, at nine o'clock at night, I did two business registrations. By the time I woke up in the morning, SMSs and registration numbers were on my phone. So I thought that was amazing. <laughs> and our government doesn't get much right, but they did a fabulous job with that. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot more potential. It's about getting a lot of our people uh, exposed to the technology, like we're struggling with keeping the lights on in the country. So it's a whole bunch of policy things that need to align for us to really, to really grow. And South Africa is sort of the gateway to Africa. And if you can get in here, it's, I think the whole continent is open to you. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So, I mean, South Africa is just one country, but Africa, you know, is, is such a huge market. So what other countries are you seeing um, that are sort of, you know, emerging in terms of e-commerce and where e-commerce is really growing. Uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, definitely Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. I think I think they have a bigger e-commerce market than we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about Kenya? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too. I'm not. I'm not that familiar. It's just that Nigeria, they're like number one, and I keep an eye on them. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's opportunities in Kenya as well. Okay. Fantastic. Um, one more question was about B2B e-commerce. And so, of course, we've talked a lot about, you know, B2C e-commerce, but what about B2B? Any idea if that is really becoming popular? So are there brands, for example, that are, you know, selling to their distributors and wholesalers um, digitally? Is, is that a trend? Um, I can... I can answer that on the um, on, on on that side. Um, B two B is a, well, basically what we do. We fund clients in that kind of space because uh, our clients are mostly B two B clients, not B two C clients. Um, and one of the sites I mentioned earlier, a, a site called Get Lion, and that's Get Lion, and that's been established to uh, to do exactly that, to put businesses together with other businesses. Uh, what's nice about that uh, site? It's it's also got some kind of um, payment escrow. So, you know, when you're dealing with a small company, you just don't know if that person's going to deliver. And so, you know, also has that kind of um, process in place where your funds are not, the funds are not released until obviously you deliver. But what you can also get on that site is that you can also get funding. Uh, so, yes, okay, I'm only going to get this, uh, this delivery, I'm only going to get payment when delivery happens successfully. But now how do I get, um, how do I get money to execute in the order? And so that's what we've been uh, backing because it just kind of fits our model. Um, um, Craig, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of um, kind of like matching sites and network sites, which hasn't worked as well. Um, but I think, I think these Get Lion guys are getting it right. Um, some of the other things around, you're talking about digitization. So the financial side has uh, been digitalized uh, and, 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 and there's a massive focus on it and it's, and it's going really well, shopping, e-commerce, um, and I think a lot of this has been accelerated by COVID. You know, we, you know, everybody 
knew that you had to go past this way, even our government. And um, I think COVID, when everything kind of stood still, people then realized, hey, you know, even a restaurant is kind of digitizing uh, their menus and a delivery process to you either via Uber Eats or, you know, they're doing it themselves by other, other platforms. So there's, so there's tons of opportunities of, um, uh, of clients who are not digitizing. Uh, but I think there's, you know, everybody's gone in that path because mostly because of, um, um, mostly because of e-commerce, I mean, not e-commerce, of, because of COVID. And so how do I get my business out there where, you know, people are not walking into a store anymore. People are not coming into my business to chat to me. Um, so I've, I've got to digitize it, put it on, you know, um, put it out there uh, um, digitally so people can consume my services or product. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess one last question is um, somebody's asking, how can I restart my business again after this COVID pandemic? And again, that's a very broad question. Um, and we don't know what their business is specifically. But what, what sort of trends are you seeing in terms of, you know, businesses? Of course, we know that a lot of businesses have to, um, you know, go online because uh, of the pandemic and people are working from home and all. But what sort of trends are you seeing in South Africa specifically in terms of the impact of COVID and the changes that are happening in, in terms of how business is done? Who wants to take this? <laughs> I think I think Yolanda is a great example of uh, what's possible uh, because it's um, um, as you said you want to restart your business. Uh, I mean, I was chatting to a person um, just before COVID um, who has uh, a certain physical disabilities, and they were wanting to say, how do they go and you know they're, they're a music teacher? How do they go and you know they needed money to then get into a vehicle and buy a special vehicle to go and uh, to teach different people their, um, their music skills. And then um, just showing, but you can do this online, you know, your payments, you can receive, uh, you could do this via like a, back then it was Skype uh, before Teams and Zoom became popular. Uh, you can do it via Skype, you can have a payment system set up. And I mean, within, within a few months, they were teaching clients, not just in South Africa, but around the world. So they didn't need to go and do, um, you know, spend expensive things about buying expensive vehicles to transport you. And then, and then you've got to trans, you've got to, you know, go from one house to another house, which there's traveling time in between. So not only were they able to get more clients in the day, um, they were able to, you know, sell their, uh, get people to consume their services online. So I think no matter what business you're into, figure out how you can get, um, you know, get it digitized in a way that people can consume it. And then remember South Africa, is not your only, if you're from South Africa, is not your only market. Uh, you learn is this proven that you can sit anywhere in the world and you can sell to anyone in the world, right? So, um, uh, and maybe I should hand over to Yolanda to help on the other side, but I think that's proof that you can start almost anything with very little capital these days. I think, uh, I think the major focus for entrepreneurs should be on marketing, especially now with everything being so digital, the the more in-depth you understand algorithms, SEO, and that kind of thing, that's going to be your biggest advantage is not so much your product and how quickly you get it. Uh, like, like for me as a financial advisor, I, I compete with thousands of advisors in South Africa where others are struggling. I am flourishing only because I had a greater uh, digital presence, uh, presence far earlier than COVID. So my, my SEO is working for me. My digital presence, uh, presence is working for me all because I understand the technology and I know how to work it for, for my benefit. And I started early. So I, I can get numbers. Like if I go into my analytics, I am competing in terms of numbers with some of the biggest brands in the country. And it's just me and my business. You know, so understanding the technology is, I think it's 80% of the battle. Right. And you have a fantastic podcast as well, Yolanda. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to start wrapping up here. Let us know if you have any more questions for our panelists. And let me just go through the comments, see if I've missed any questions, because people are posting their questions in the chat box as well. <laughs> uh, Peter says, thanks, Megla. You asked top questions really to the point. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Um, Unfortunately, we are set up just for South African business for now, but watch this space. Oh, that's Andrew. Okay. <laughs> Andrew responded. Um, 
let's see, I, uh, Nazir is saying there are opportunities in Kenya and Ghana, so cool. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna share a slide and uh, we're gonna tell you how you can download a number of free eBooks that um, we have put together. And uh, can we show the QR code of the eBooks, please? Okay, do you want to? Yes, fantastic. So this is, uh, there are a range of eBooks that you can download from here. And uh, some, so you can take a picture of the QR code and the bit.ly URL as well, but there are eBooks on e-commerce trends and technology trends and um, a lot of different um, and very high quality eBooks. I mean, I've read a few of them as well and we've given them to other buyers in previous webinars and we've got really good feedback. So these are like really good solid eBooks that have um, actionable information that you can actually use. So, um, and then we also want to go to the next slide to show you how you can uh, avail of Global Sources Match. So if you click on this QR code, it will take you to the Global Sources Match website where you can fill in a form, submit your details, and uh, tell the team what kind of products you're looking for, what kind of suppliers you're looking for, and they will go find a suitable supplier for you and then get back to you. And in some cases, they will also arrange a meeting, a virtual meeting um, for you. And uh, in the future, if you're able to travel and visit our exhibitions in Hong Kong, um, we will also be able to arrange this, these meetings in person. And uh, Global Sources is also planning to do a show in Africa, which um, I'm not gonna <laughs> go into that because we don't have confirmed details, but yeah, that is something um, you know very exciting that's coming up and hopefully we'll have details about that very soon. So take a photo of this QR code. If you are already sourcing, definitely take advantage of this service. It's absolutely free um, and then our speakers' email addresses are here. So Yolanda at financiallyfabulousfemales.com and then Andrew is Andrew at profitsharepartners.com. So if you want to reach out to our speakers, go ahead and do that directly. So we can stop sharing the screen now. And I just want to thank Yolanda, Andrew, both of you. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a great discussion, really good um, information. I'm sure our audiences um, learned a lot and now they have a lot more understanding of how they can get um, financing or the financing options that are available. So thank you so much for that. Great, and thank, thank you everyone. Uh, everyone. Uh, Yolanda, it's great, great to meet you. Megla, thank you for that. And uh, for, for everybody on the, on the, on the chat uh, and the webinar, feel free to, to contact us. Um, we'd, we'd love to help you on your journey. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the opportunity. And I hope you guys got some value from today's presentation. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this live webinar. And um, check out globalsources.com for all of your sourcing needs. And we'll be back next month with another webinar. Take care. Bye.